Hello everyone, welcome to another reading adventure. I'm going to be reading about helpers who cooperate or work together today. Before we get started, let's do a word puzzle. Let's see what word we have today. Do you know what this word is before I put all of the letters? We have another G for goat. A lot of our puzzles have had a goat on them. Here's something that goats might like to eat. Looks like hay. It could also be B for bale. B-A-L-E. But I bet it's H for hay. You know what shape that is, don't you? It's an H for heart. Do you think you know what word this is yet? You know, that, this H just looks a little bit like an N. I'm going to make it a little longer. Do you ever fix your letters when they, they don't look just so? Do you ever fix them, erase them, and start again? Here's a turkey. So we need a T for turkey. Can you guess this letter yet? Here is an O for octopus. and a U for umbrella. And this word is one of the UGH words. I call them anything with a U-G-H on the end of it, I call it an UGH word. And I, these words are special because they're all pronounced differently even though they've got the same letters on the end, usually O-U-G-H. This one is pronounced THOUGH. Sometimes the UGH letters in, in words can make the words difficult to figure out, but we always figure them out, though, <laughs> in the end. <laughs> so this book is about some helpers that have to cooperate to solve a problem. It's a very funny book, The Baby BB Bird. You know, this book has a lot of sound effects of animals in the background. So while I'm reading, you might hear some animal sound effects in the background. Those are all sounds I made with my own mouth. I love to make animal sounds. I recorded them on a computer and I can add those sounds to my video. So I had a lot of fun reading this one. I can't wait. The Baby BB Bird by Diane Redfield Massey. Pictures by Stephen Kellogg. This is for Daniel and Leanna Hardy, to Peter with love. There's the zookeeper. Oh, he's got somebody. Who do you think he's got in this little box? It says, new to the zoo. The animals at the zoo had roared and growled and hissed and meowed all day long. They were very tired. Oh, it's eight o'clock, yawned the elephant as he settled down in his big hay bed. Oh, I've eaten 562 peanuts today, he said. But no one heard him. They were all asleep. The zoo was very still until Bobby 
It's the baby Bibi bird, said the giraffe. He's new to the zoo. Well, tell him to be quiet, growled the leopard. I want to sleep. Be quiet, please, said the giraffe politely. But I can't, said the baby bird. I'm wide awake. Roared the lion. He's wide awake, explained the giraffe. Oh, why isn't he tired like the rest of us? Aren't you tired? asked the giraffe. No, said the baby bird. I've slept all day, and now it's time for me to sing. Oh dear, said the elephant, and I am so sleepy. Quiet! Shouted all the animals. We can't sleep. All night long. The sun rose in the morning on a very tired zoo. What can be the matter? cried the keeper. The elephant is still lying down. The lion's paws are over his eyes. The eagle isn't screeching. Oh, dear me, the animals must be sick. And he hurried away. Baby Bobby Bobby, said the baby baby bird cheerfully, and he settled down for his morning nap. Baby Bobby Bobby, bees The lion whispered to the bear. I have a plan, he said. The bear nodded and whispered the plan to the others. The baby bird was at last asleep. Baby Bobby Bobby roared the lion. Baby Bobby Bobby trumpeted the elephant. Baby Bobby Bobby bellowed the bears. 
Baby Bobby Bobby, Baby Bobby Bobby, sang all the animals together. Quiet, said the BB bird. Can't you see that I'm sleeping? It's time for my nap. Baby Bobby, yelled the hippos. Baby Bobby, shrieked the seals. Baby Bobby, thundered the moose and the water buffalo. Baby Bobby Bobby, baby Bobby Bobby, they roared. The keeper came running with his arms in the air. Something is wrong, he shouted. Something is very wrong with the animals. Whatever shall I do? And he jumped up and down with alarm. Baby Bobby Bobby sang the animals all day long. And the baby baby bird simply couldn't sleep at all. The sun went down. And the moon came up. Oh, <coughs> baby Bobby, whispered the lion, who was too tired to roar. Bobby, baby sighed the bear as he closed his eyes. Be, be, Bobby, mumbled the elephant half to himself. And then all was still. The moon shone down upon a sleeping zoo. Not an ear or a tail or a whisker moved. And high, high up in the linden tree, a tiny bird inside a leaf was fast asleep and now every day at the zoo you can hear baby bobby bobby baby bobby bobby in between the lion's roars. <sighs> Lovely. But at night, there is never a sound. Nighttime is really best for sleeping, especially for very little birds. They all had to cooperate at that zoo to get that baby baby bird to go to sleep. Board games are another thing where people have to cooperate in order to have fun and make it work. And I'd like to show you how to make your own board game where everyone has to cooperate to get the pieces to the end. So right here, I've got a piece of paper. I've got four different coins, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, or a penny, and I have a paper clip. Now with any color or a pencil, the first thing you're gonna need to draw is a circle. I'm using my brown marker here. You can always trace around a drinking glass or something if you want a really nice looking circle. And you're going to need to divide your circle into four parts. 
like that. Now in each of these parts, I'm gonna put the name of one of these coins. Oh, I think I'll use red. Let's see, we've got the penny, which is one cent, the nickel, which is five cents, the dime, which is 10 cents, and the quarter, which is 25 cents. The way this game works is you put a paper clip in the middle and hold it with your finger and flick it. You have to get your other fingers out of the way. Where it lands, that's the piece that gets to move. Well, now we need to make a place for them to move to. Here's where we can have some fun. I'm going to grab a couple colors. Let's see, I think red and green and blue. Oh, let's have some, let's have some yellow. So I'm going to make some spaces for them to move on. You can make them round or square or triangle or whatever you want. But you see, I'm going to make a path with my spaces. Go all the way around. There we go. You can make more and more and more and more and more and more spaces. You can make these as you can make this as long as you want. I'm just going to put two of each color. And then I'll stop just so we can show you the next thing. Okay. Now one part's going to have to be, whoops, I dropped my pen. There we go. One part's going to have to be the start, and the other side will be the finish. I'll have this be my start. So I write S T A R. T. There's my starting place, and then the path goes all the way around so it gets to the finish. You can make yours longer or make it go in a different shape. Okay. And the way it works is I move the piece it lands on. So I got five cents, so I'm going to put the nickel on the start. The next person has a turn, and they got the penny. So they put the penny at the start. Next person gets the 25 cent, looks like. Now we're back to the penny. Now the penny gets to move forward one. Whatever, whatever one it lands on, that's the piece that gets to move, and you take turns. You can have different things like skip a turn or something. You can put your own different rules on here. You could even say that as soon as a piece reaches the finish line, you get to add that amount to your score. So this would give you one, that would give you 10, that would give you five, that would give you 25 points. But remember that your turn, is you choose which piece moves forward one. What are some changes you would make to this game to make it more fun for you? There's all kinds of ways you can invent your own games. I just used a few things that I had around the house. What do you have around the house? Is there something you could use to make markers big enough to stand on and people could be the pieces? What kind of games could you come up with where people have to work together in order to play the game? Lots of different problems need helpers to work together and cooperate to solve them. This is another story where that happens. This story is one of my favorites from when I was a child, and this is about Seattle, where I live close to Seattle right now. This building right here is called the Space Needle, and this is a made-up story about a creature living on the top of the Space Needle. It's called Weedle on the Needle. Weedle on the Needle, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. What do you see him doing there? Why do you suppose he's putting clouds into that bag? 
It says, one day in 1974, I set my mind to creating a story about and for Seattle. Using the Space Needle as a background, I began the creative process. Fortunately and unfortunately, the only word I could think of that rhymed with needle was weedle. Later that day, as I walked into the quiet rain, the peace and tranquility of the moment was shattered by a loud whistle from a fairy on the sound. Of these tiny seeds, the story was sown. This book was dedicated then and is rededicated now to Seattle. Stephen Cosgrove. Many, many years ago, before explorers sailed to the Northwest, there lived a large, happy creature called the Weedle. He was pleasingly plump, covered in orange, fluffy fur, and had a big, round, red nose. He spent his days sniffing flowers and enjoying the peace and quiet that nature offered. Forever and a day, everything was peaceful until one afternoon, the Weedle watched curiously as a large ship sailed into the bay. Laughing loudly, workers jumped from the ship and set about clearing the land and building this, that, and all other things. As they worked, they whistled. And the more they worked, the more they whistled. All that whistling hurt the poor Weedle's ears. The whistling continued night and day, and the Weedle could get absolutely no sleep at all. With no sleep, he became grouchier and grouchier. If he was ever going to get some sleep, the Weedle knew he must put a stop to all this whistling. Hmm, he thought, if the workers can't have their tools, they won't be able to work. And if they can't work, they won't whistle. So later that night, he sneaked into the workers' camp and took all of their tools. Sadly for the Weedle, the next morning, the men quickly got new tools from the ship and went back to work, whistling even louder than before. If anything, the Weedle was resourceful. He decided that the next best thing to do was to scare the workers. For when workers are scared, they can't pucker. And when they can't pucker, they can't whistle. As we all know, a puckerless whistle is no whistle at all. One by one, he began creeping up behind them and growling at the top of his voice. Sure enough, the workers were so scared they couldn't whistle a whit. All would have been the Weedle's salvation, save for one brave lumberjack who, to prove he wasn't scared, simply whistled. The Weedle put his hands over his ears and ran into the forest. Well, let me tell you, that did it. The Weedle knew he could no longer live near the bay, so he packed his belongings and left. He wandered high into the mountains, searching for a place far enough away from the workers that he wouldn't hear the whistling. He wandered and wandered until he came to the very top of Mount Rainier. He listened carefully. What delight! He couldn't hear even a whisper of a whistle on the wind. Quickly, he unpacked his sleeping sack, his toothbrush, with the squiggly on the end and his white woolly pajamas. This was the quiet place he had hoped for. This was a place where he could sleep for a long, long time. He quickly brushed his teeth, washed his furry hands, and slipped into his woolly pajamas. 
Then he slid his big body into the sleeping sack, flopped his head on his pillow, and fell fast asleep. He was so happy in his deep sleep that his big red nose blinked on and off like a flashing beacon on a tall pole. He slept through the night, through the day, through weeks and months and on through several years. Oh, such sweet, sweet dreams. But after a long while, something woke the Weedle from his deep sleep. Whistling, loud whistling, happy whistling. He looked about and too much to his surprise, he saw that the workers had continued to build over the years and now had built almost to the edge of his mountain. But what was more alarming was that now everybody was whistling, children and workers alike. Oh no, cried the Weedle. What am I ever to do? With all this whistling, I'll never get back to sleep. He began pacing up and down the mountain, mumbling and grumbling all the while. Then his nose lit up and a smile crossed his lips. I've got it, he chuckled, and with that, he removed everything from his large striped bag, and with it dragging behind, he climbed to the very top of Mount Rainier. He stood on his fuzzy tiptoes, reached up into the sky, and grabbed a cloud. Then he grabbed another, and another. One by one, he stuffed the clouds into the bag until he had it full to overflowing. With the bag thrown over his shoulder, he set out for the source of his noisy whistling problem, the growing city of Seattle. The skyline of the city was filled with tall buildings, but the Weedle only needed one to complete his plan, and the one he chose was the Space Needle. Giddy to put his plan into action, he hurried to the base of the Space Needle, jumped into the elevator, and zipped to the very top. There he stood and looked all about. All around were happy children and workers, all whistling and laughing, having a great time. The Weedle chuckled as he reached deep into the soggy bag. He grabbed a puffy cloud by the tail and then slung it around and around and flipped it into the air. The cloud lifted high into the sky and then hung there like a glop of whipped cream on a blue kitchen ceiling. The cloud gurgled and sloshed and then one drop of rain fell and then another and another. Soon it was pouring. Now, the kindly folks in Seattle like the rain but it is nearly impossible and highly improbable that one can whistle with any intensity in a rainstorm. With the rain falling all around, everyone ran inside and soon it became very still, very quiet indeed. The Weedle stretched out on the top of the space needle and using the bag of clouds as a pillow, fell fast asleep. And with each snarkled snore, his big red nose slowly blinked on and off, and as he slept, it rained and it rained. And it rained. The people of Seattle had to stay inside, and they became very sad. It didn't take much to figure out that someone was throwing clouds into the sky from the top of the Space Needle. Finally, the mayor himself went to the Weedle on the Needle to plead with him to stop throwing rain clouds into the sky. 
Please, said the mayor, would you stop throwing clouds into the sky? The kindly folk of Seattle love to whistle while they work, but with all the rain, there is little to whistle about, and without whistling, there is little work being done. The Weedle said he was sorry, but still, and all he couldn't sleep when he heard whistling. There was nothing he could do. Now the mayor thought and thought and quickly devised a plan, a wonderful plan indeed. The mayor's plan was a simple plan, and sometimes simplicity is best. All through the night and into the next morning, sailmakers stitched and sewed cotton, flannel, and wool. Miles of thread were laced through the eyes of needles as the weathered hands of the sailmakers sewed. They sewed pink flannel onto yellow wool and blue cotton onto red flannel, and by early morning they had finished their task. Whoever said that mayors never think a thoughtful thought? This was a good plan. This plan was great. At precisely noon, not a minute before and not a minute after, the mayor again met with the wheat needle on the needle. In his hands, he held the largest pair of earmuffs you have ever seen. These earmuffs are for you, said the mayor in his most political of voices. With these on your ears, you won't hear a thing. You won't hear us whistle. You won't even hear the big whistles from the ships in the harbor where the train's going by. The Weedle pulled the earmuffs over his ears and was surrounded in the delight of silence. He didn't hear the kindly folk of Seattle cheering. He didn't hear the end of the mayor's speech. With the earmuffs in place, he simply rolled over and fell fast asleep. So content was he that his big red nose again began to blink. There's a weedle on the needle. I know just what you're thinking, but if you look up late at night, you'll see his red nose blinking. Sometimes when helpers work together to make a change that they can control and help somebody out, Instead of trying to make someone else do something, it works out for the best. What can you do to be cooperative with the people around you? To talk to you next time for another book adventure. Bye-bye.